Good evening. Good to be here tonight. We're going to finish up Daniel 11 tonight. Um, it's going to be hard for me to keep up what time it is, and we're that thing's about 10 minutes off. Um, so uh, tonight, I want to I want to pick up in the very last part of Daniel 11 and talk about that. Um, but before we get to verse 36, I kind of want to pick up with um, the madman one more time and just kind of touch on him just a little bit. Uh, there's a couple of things that's said about him uh, that I, I think is pretty interesting. So let's go to verse 21, chapter 11, verse 21. Now this is the madman, uh, Antiquus Epiphanes. Um, uh, he, he's, uh, he's very notable. Uh, he's, the, he's the one that is, comes up and, and destroys Jerusalem, basically. But look at verse 21. It says, um, In his estate shall stand up a vile person to whom they shall not give the honor of the kingdom, but he shall come in peaceably and obtain the kingdom by flatteries. And with the arms of the flood shall they be overthrown from before him, and uh, they shall be broken up. Yea, also the princes of the covenant. And after the league made with him, he shall work deceitfully, for he shall come up and shall uh, become strong with the small people. He shall enter in peaceably, even upon the fattest places of the providence. And he shall do that which his fathers have not done, nor his father's fathers, he shall scatter among them the prey and spoil and riches, yea, and he shall forecast his devices against the stronghold even for a time. And he shall stir up the power and his courage against the king of the south and the great army and the king of the south shall stir up the battle and break uh, a great mining army, but he shall not stand for they shall forecast devices against him. Um, I'm looking for a particular verse here. Uh, look at verse 31. And the arms shall stand on the part, and they shall pollute the sanctuary of strength, and shall take away the daily sacrifice, and they shall place the abomination that make desolate. All right? And so that's what he done. He came up, uh, and, and people have confused him with the Antichrist because he comes up peaceably, and he's talking. He's talking. But he is a picture of the Antichrist. But he's definitely a forerunner. He is not the Antichrist. This is not the Antichrist. This, this is a historical person that came up and he took over Jerusalem and he desolated the temple. And the, this is the time of the Maccabees. If, if you ever heard of the uh, uh, Apocrypha, the, the books that we don't have that the Catholics have, the, the books of the Maccabees. All right, uh, that talks about the exploits of the Maccabees. Now, let's talk about that a minute. Nobody, including Jewish people, have ever considered those books, what we call the Apocrypha, they have never considered those books scripture. They just considered them historical. Okay, so... When the King James, you ha how many of you ever heard these people talk about King James 1611? I'm a 1611 guy, 1611. They couldn't read a 1611 late in front of them. But, but you've heard these guys, right? And when they translated the original King James, they actually had the Apocrypha in the original King James. And for years, they had the Apocrypha attached to it. Okay, it was still there. Um, but no longer. We have 66 books that are inspired, and that's what we believe. But anyway, um, that's what happened. Was the Maccabees came up and they cleansed the temple. They got rid of all this. They cleansed the temple. Um, that's when uh, Hanukkah came about. They were running out of oil. They didn't have it a day or so oil, and, and 
uh, they had to they had to purify the oil, and it was I think it had to be seven days or something like that. And and the lampstand burnt for seven days on one day's oil. And uh, and so that's where Hanukkah came from. But anyway, that was, all that happened during that time period. So this is a historical guide. I want you to see to see that. But we see glimpses of what the Antichrist is going to look like through this guy. All right? Now, that brings us down to verse 36, where we want to pick up tonight. And uh, uh, I left you with verse 36, and I gave you some, uh, some information, and y'all had all this stuff to look at for two or three weeks now, so y'all know all about it now. Verse 36, here we're going to pick up, and this is going to start talking about the Antichrist. And the king shall do according to his will, and he shall exalt himself and magnify himself above every god, and shall speak marvelous things against the god of gods, and shall prosper till the indignation be accomplished, for that is determined shall be done. Neither shall he regard the God of his fathers. Now you see that's very similar to who we just read, right? Neither shall he regard the God of his fathers, nor the desire of women, nor regard any God, for he shall magnify himself above all. But in his estate shall he honor the God of forces, and the God of whom his fathers knew not shall he honor with gold and silver and with precious stones and pleasant things. We'll go on and read this, and then we'll come back and pick up, because I want to talk about those things there. Uh, Thus uh, shall he do in the most stronghold with a strange God, whom he shall acknowledge and increase with glory, and he shall cause them to rule over many, and shall divide the land for gain. And at the time of the end, that is a, that is a reference to the latter part of the tribulation, usually. Uh, at the time of the end, uh, shall the king of the south push at him, and the king of the north shall come against him uh, like a whirlwind with chariots and with horsemen and with many ships. And he shall uh, enter into the countries and shall overflow and pass over. He shall enter into the glorious land, and many countries shall be overthrown but these shall escape out of his hand, even Edom and Moab, and the chief of the children of Ammon. So let me ask you a question. Whose children are Edom and Moab? Moab. Yes. Exactly. Lot's daughter. They kin. They close kin to Israel. They play a big part in the end time. Where are they at? Where's Edom at? Does anybody know? I know you know. Edom. Anybody know where Edom is? You ever heard of Petra? Well, Nera. That's where the Edomites were. Up in the crags of the rocks. Super fortified. Scripture says in the time of the tribulation, Israel shall flee into that. Say, I was sharing this with Anais before they left, I think. Pretty sure I was sharing this with Anais. In Petra, Christians used to go in there and they would take pieces of Scripture, they would take pages out of Scripture and roll them up and put them in the rocks inside of Petra because they know Israel's going to come in there and they want them to know who the Messiah is. Okay, think about that as a mission. All right, so anyway, so um, let's get back here. Um, um, he shall stretch forth his hand, verse 42, uh, also upon the countries, and the land of Egypt shall not escape. But he shall have power over the treasures of gold and silver and over the precious things of Egypt and over the Libyans and the Ethiopians uh, shall uh, be in his, at his steps. But tidings out of the east and out of the north shall trouble him. Therefore, he shall go forth with great fury to destroy and uh, utterly to make away many. 
and he shall plant the tabernacles of his palace between the seas of the glorious holy mountain, yet he shall come to his end, and none shall help him. All right, so real quick, I want to look at that little map that I gave you just to show you something, and then we'll get back in the text there, and we'll, we'll talk about what's there, okay? On that map, You see the Dead Sea down at the bottom of it. You see where Jerusalem is right there above it. Antichrist is going to take and make his headquarters in Jerusalem during the tribulation period. Midway through the tribulation period, he will make his headquarters there. Now, you see the end coming down? I wish I had this scripture. That might be the scripture there, Ezekiel 38. Uh, but so that's Russia. That is Iran. Uh, that's some of the other countries that's over there around where Russia's at. Uh, they, they make a league of uh, the Persian people in Russia. And they come down. When they come down the first time, God destroys the army with 100-pound hailstone. Poof. And they go back to Russia, and they lick their wounds. Okay? The king of the south, he starts pushing up. That's Egypt. He starts pushing up towards Jerusalem. Russia regains power and comes back down. And the tidings of the east, who's going to come from the east? Who else? Who else is east? Pakistan, India, Korea, China, the kings of the east. They're going to come together. The Euphrates, it's, the Bible says that the Euphrates will dry up and they will come across the Euphrates as dry land. Guess what? I just seen this in the news just a few months ago. The Euphrates is drying up. Wonder how we should have known that. <laughs> okay? So this map kind of shows you how the things are going to lay out. Okay? They all come together, and I, I'm going to I'm going to be a spoiler alert. They all come together right there at Jerusalem. Antichrist is wringing his hands, and then the sign of his coming, where every eye sees him, appears in the sky. Now, I like Doctor Bowman. Doctor Bowman, I think, explained this as good as it can be explained. He said it's a slow descent. He said, everybody's worried about everything being seen on TV. He said, it's a slow descent. He said, it takes 24 hours for the earth to make a, a rotation. He said, they're seeing the sign of his coming. And they're seeing the sign of his coming. And they're seeing the sign of his coming. And so that gives them time to make a pact with these nations. And they turn their attention to the sign of his coming. And that's when you have the battle of battles of Armageddon. And uh, and so I like Dr. Bowman's explanation of that. That explains it probably better than I could explain it or think about it. He, he had a whole lot better mind than I have. Okay, so let's get back to our thing here because I want to get to somewhere in particular. Um, let's let's uh, let me get on the notes together here where I want them to be. You just hang on with him just a minute. All right. So starting in verse 36 through 45, this vision concerning the willful king and the great tribulation, this man is the Antichrist, and here's why. Because Daniel saw what would befall Israel in the latter days. Chapter 10, verse 14. There was nothing in secular history which corresponds to what Daniel saw in this particular passage. The indignation 
is to be accomplished, all right? That is a technical term, indig indignation to be accomplished. It frequently refers to the great tribulation. You can look at Isaiah 26, verse 20 for an example of it. Indignation appears 22 times in the Old Testament, though it uh, don't always mean tribulation period. It sometimes does things, um, but that's what this is referring to. Um, uh, this section corresponds with the little horn of chapter 7, the man of sin in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 3, and the beast in Revelation chapter 13. Let's go look at the beast in Revelation chapter 13. Turn in your Bibles to Revelation chapter 13, if you would, please. Let me know when you find your way there. Amen. Oh, me. Okay. Starting in verse 1. And I stood, now this is John talking, I stood upon the sand of the sea, and I saw a beast rise up out of the sea. Now, we talked about that a couple of weeks ago. I don't remember exactly when it was, but we talked about the sea represents, matter of fact, it tells you right here in Revelation, it represents uh, the nations of the Gentiles. Okay, so so here he is. I'm standing on the sand of the sea, and out of the sea I saw a beast rise up out of the sea, having seven heads and ten horns, and upon his horns ten crowns, and upon his heads the name of blasphemy. Okay, and the beast which I saw was likened unto a leopard, and his feet uh, were as the feet of a bear, and his mouth as the mouth of a lion, and the dragon gave him power, and his seat, and great authority, and I saw one of his heads as it was wounded to death. Now, I'm going to tell you Marty's opinion about something, and you just have to take it, because I'm not by myself, okay? I mean, I'm, it's not Marty standing out there by himself, but... I believe this beast that we see coming up is a system. Okay. The reason I believe it's a system is because you see all the heads and the leaders of it. Okay, But it's coming up, and it's coming up in the Gentiles. Now, you're going to see one of those heads get wounded. Now, that head that gets wounded is going to be your Antichrist. Okay, I mean, it, that, that's uh, where it comes up is going to be your Antichrist coming up. So I saw, verse 3, one of the heads as it was wounded to death, and his deadly wound was healed, and, and all the world wondered after the beast. And they worshipped the dragon, which gave the beast, uh, gave power to the beast, and they worshipped the beast, saying, Who is like the beast? Who is able to make war with him? Now I think we're starting to move towards the Antichrist as it's talking like this. And there was uh, given unto him a mouth speaking great things and blasphemies, and power was given unto him to continue 40 and two months. Look what it says in verse 5. And there was given unto him a mouth speaking great things, blasphemy, and power was given unto him to continue 42 months. That's three and a half years. And he opened his mouth and blasphemy where? What was the one we was reading about over there in verse 36 in chapter 11 of Daniel? He's speaking great things against who? God, okay? If we were looking chapter 7 of Daniel, speaking great things against God, all right? So he's, he's speaking blasphemy. Now I think we're talking about the Antichrist at this particular point. I think the Antichrist comes to power through a system. And that's Marty's opinion. Like I say, I don't stand alone with that, all right? Um, uh, da, 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 da. Verse 6, and he opened his mouth, blasphemy against God, to blaspheme his name and his tabernacle and all that dwell in heaven. And he was given unto him to make war with the saints and to overcome them, and power was given him uh, over all kinds of, all kindreds and tongues and nations. And all that dwell upon the earth shall worship him, whose names are not written in the Lamb's book of life. And if any uh, man have an ear, let him hear. Uh, he leadeth, uh, leadeth into captivity, shall go into captivity. Excuse me. And he that killeth with the sword must be killed with the sword. 
Here's the patience and faith of the saints now. Verse 11. And I beheld another beast. This is your false prophet. Okay. He's going to be the one that is singing the song. For everybody to turn to the, to the Antichrist. Okay. I beheld another beast coming out of the earth. He had two horns like a lamb. He spake like a dragon. He exercised all the power of the first beast before him and caused the earth and them that dwell thereon to do what? Worship. What's a false prophet do? What's a prophet do? They lead you to worship. They lead you. All right, so that's what this guy's doing. Okay? And, and we have the mark of the beast there at the end of it. So this is who this cat is. All right? Now, give me another drink of water here. Let's go back into Daniel, and, and let's just uh, talk a few things that, that, that's going to come up here. Um, he, he defecates the, the, uh, the temple. He's very, uh, he is the very personification of a self-will and self-exaltation. Uh, in this, he follows Satan, Isaiah uh, 14, verses 12 through 17, 1 Timothy verse 3, uh, chapter 3, verse 6, 2 Thessalonians 2, 4, Revelation 13, uh, verses 4 through 6. He puts himself above every god, though in reality he honors Satan. Verse 38, look at Daniel chapter 11, verse 38. But in his estate, he shall honor the God of forces. You see that right there? What does the ESV say right there? That is the, that is the translation. The God of fortresses, which is Satan. Okay. That, that is the correct translation. All right. Um, so, uh, da, 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 da. He is given power to speak marvelous things against the God of gods. Uh, Revelation chapter 13, verses 5 and 6. The word against in Daniel chapter 11, verse 36, determines whether um, he is the first or the second beast of Revelation chapter 13. Okay, so now this is getting into some technical stuff, but um, the word translated against, if it retains the rendering, then he's the Antichrist. If the first, uh, which is the first beast, Revelation 13. If the word is translated instead of, then he's the second beast. Because now instead of the Antichrist, he's, he's magnifying the Antichrist. You know what I'm saying? So it depends on how you take that, that uh, translation there. But we're going to take it against. Okay? <laughs> That's the way we're going to take it. Against. Now, I told you. Uh, last week, I will, or the two weeks ago, we have arguments for him being a Jew, and we have arguments for him being a Gentile, right? Now, y'all have all those in your hands, or you should, or you did have. At one time, you have, all right? So, I want to go down through the arguments of uh, him being a Jew and against him being a Jew, all right? So first of all, it says the God of his fathers. Okay, so uh, da, 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 where is that? It verse thirty-seven. Neither shall he regard the God of his fathers. Okay, so a lot of people say that that is Jew Jewish in because it talks about Jacob, and Abraham. You know, the, the God of their fathers. All right. And so uh, it's predominantly Jewish. So that is one of the arguments for him being a Jew. Number two, uh, the phrase, uh, he has no desire of women. All right, verse 37, neither shall he regard God of his father, nor the desire of women. All right, so now this is, You've got to walk in the circles I walk in, and I'm not saying that you don't, but I, you've got to walk in the circles that I walk in to probably have heard this. But um, 
Um, Jews back in in uh, before Christ, the women they were all praying that they would be the one to carry the Messiah. They they knew the Messiah was coming, so that they were they were they were praying that. Okay, as a reference to Christ, <coughs> the Messiah of the Jews. Um, the Antichrist will be an apostate Jew, uh, or this is the way it goes, disregarding such a promise or a blessing of that particular promise that somebody actually carried. Now, there's another side of that thing, and this is where I was talking about the circles that I walked in. There's a prayer that Jewish men pray, Lord, thank you for not making me a woman. Okay, and I mean, that's that, that was so... I think that's the other side of it. But anyway, that's Marty. Um, third, uh, the third argument is he'll be such an apostate Jew that God describes him uh, and his end as one that's uncircumcised, which is Ezekiel chapter 28, verse 10. That is the way uh, uh, a person is described that's an apostate. Fourth, He's an idle shepherd within the fold of Israel. That's Zechariah uh, chapter 11, verses 15 through 17. And fifth, Christ was a Jew, and he said in John 5, 43, I am come in my Father's name, and you receive me not. If another shall come in his own name, you'll receive. The word another is alos, which means another of the same kind. Thus the Antichrist will be another Jew, whom the Jews will accept, although he's an apostate. Now, this is all these are arguments that the Antichrist is going to be a Jew. Okay? Now, we got some arguments that he's going to be a Gentile as well. So, let's look at them. Oh, yeah. Uh, there's one more. The tribe of Dan is not mentioned among the tribes uh, making 144,000 in Revelation chapter 7. Thus, the Antichrist comes out of an apostate tribe. Okay, so uh, that's that's another argument. Arguments for him not being a Jew. So let's deal with that. The noun translated God by the American uh, Standard Version in Daniel chapter 11, verse 37, should be translated gods with a plural. That word is Elohim. Elohim is the plural of God. And it's often used as, uh, to describe heathen deities. 2 Chronicles chapter 32, verse 15 would be an example. Daniel chapter 11, verses 37 and 38. American Standard Version and the Berkeley versions translate uh, it as gods. Uh, the American version is the first one. The American Standard Version and the Berkeley version translated as gods. This means the king is an apostate Gentile from Christendom regarding not the gods or the idols of the apostate era. Okay. If the Antichrist is the first beast of Revelation chapter 13, then he's a Gentile since he comes out of the sea, which is symbolic of the Gentiles. Number three, it would be doubtful if a Jew could rise to world power. Think about this. Yes, sir. Not enough pull for a Jew. They're under fire, and they're under more fire right now than they've been in a long time. Industry. Or diamonds become a lot more valuable. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, uh, yeah. Um, but uh, as we see, anti-Semitism, I can't say the word, Semitism, is, is on the rise even now where Islam, it's, it's became vogue. 
By the way, did you see my little article I put on Facebook? I don't know if they blocked it. I don't know what they've done with it because nobody's made them. Was the Taliban has announced that ties are a sign of the cross. No jump. Not kidding you. Neckties are a sign of the cross, and they need to remove them. How you like that? Okay. They got crazies over there, too. So anyway, uh, back to where we hit. Um, the book of Daniel is largely given over to the times of the Gentiles. Daniel chapter 11, verse 37 is within the Gentile context and by its simplest form of logic, one should expect the Antichrist to be a Gentile greedy for Israel's wealth because they do have a lot of wealth. Number five, the personal pronoun he in Daniel chapter 9, verse 27 refers to the prince of the previous verse. Let's go look at that. Chapter 9, verse 27. And he shall confirm a covenant with many for one week. Go up and look at verse 26. And after three score and two weeks shall Messiah be cut off, not for himself, but for the people of the prince, that shall come and destroy the city of the sanctuary, and the end thereof shall be flooded, and unto the end of the war desolations be determined. Okay? Now, Daniel 26 refers to the prince of the previous verse. That prince shall be a Roman prince, thus a Gentile. All right? And in Do Dr. Bowman, in big old letters at the bottom of that page right there, he says, I prefer the Antichrist to be a Gentile. All right? So uh, that, that's, that's the way we're going to roll with it. Uh, so he's, a, he's definitely... Uh, I believe, coming out of the Roman Empire. I think you see that with the beast that comes up out of the sea. He's not coming out of, uh, out of uh, Israel or out of the Middle East. Let me give you something real quick here, and, and we're going to be done. The campaign of Armageddon and his end. The Antichrist, the white horse rider of Revelation chapter 6, verse 2. Going forth to conquering and to conquer. What is unique about the white horse rider? There's four riders, four horses come out of the four, first four seals. What's unique about the white horse rider? A bow and no arrows. He's going to do a lot of talking. Okay. He gains power after the rapture, after the rapture of the church. At the beginning of the Great Tribulation, he makes a covenant with Israel. Daniel chapter 9, verse 27. Thus, for an uh, offering to protect her. At the time of the end, Daniel chapter 11, verse 40, and Daniel chapter 12, verse 1, is toward the middle of the tribulation. The king of the south, Egypt, and the king of the north, Russia, and her allies, Ezekiel chapter 38 to 39, Russia is called the Assyrian from the north. Isaiah 30, verses 31 through 33, Isaiah 31, Verses 8 and 9, Micah chapter 5, verse 5, jointly attack the western powers by land and sea. Daniel chapter 11, verse 40. This coalition attacks causes the Antichrist to break his covenant with Israel. Daniel chapter 9, verse 27. God at that time destroys Russia on the mountains of Israel, Ezekiel chapter 38, verse 20 through chapter 39 through 6. Now, if y'all write this down or you go back and listen to it, I'm telling you, you need to go read these verses. The armies of the revived Roman Empire move into Palestine in full force and shall conquer the surrounding territory, including Egypt. With their wealth, Edom, Moab, and Ammon escaped from the Antichrist campaign because God has reserved for them Israel to judge because of the way they treated Israel. That's Deuteronomy chapter 23, verses 3 and 4, Isaiah 11, uh, verse 14, Ezekiel 25, verse 12. 
while his campaign is continuing, he hears the rumbling of the eastern horde from the north easterly, easterly direction. Revelation chapter 16, verse 12. Revelation chapter 19, verse 19. Then he takes it out upon Israel, as did Antipas and Pithides and others. Daniel chapter 11, verse 44. Go forth with great fury to destroy and utterly to make or sweep away many. His headquarters shall then be moved in between the Mediterranean and the Dead Seas, Daniel chapter 11, verse 45, it is here that the eastern hordes come to fight with the west, but before the battle they see the sign of Christ come in Matthew 24, verse 30, and two hostile armies turn against Christ and his armies, and they come from heaven, Revelation chapter 19, verse 19. The conflict that follows is called the Supper of the Great God and is the consummation part of the campaign in Armageddon, Revelation chapter 19, verse 17. The blood will flow freely, even up to the horse's bridles. Christ is seen in the midst of, his, of the slaying, Isaiah 63, verses 1 through 3, Revelation chapter 19, verse 21. And the Antichrist comes to his end and shall be cast alive into the lake of fire, Daniel chapter 11, verse 45, Revelation chapter 19, verse 20. Okay. A note on the Battle of Armageddon. It is a campaign. It is not one battle, but a series of wars or campaigns. Starts in Revelation chapter 16, verse 14, uh, Matthew 24, verses 6 through 7. The word translated battle in Revelation 16, 14 means a war of many battles or campaigns. James 4, 1 uh, says that the two words, which mean a series of wars and individual fightings, uh, the word translated wars in James 4.1 is the same word translated battle in Revelation 16.14. Uh, the campaign of Armageddon will begin when Egypt and Russia attack the West in regard to Israel. It will end when the Western and Eastern powers are destroyed by Christ's armies from heaven. Okay. The Confederacy involves the campaigns of Armageddon the Southern Confederacy, which is Egypt, chapter 11, uh, Daniel chapter 11, verse 40. The Northern Confederacy, Russia, and her allies, Ezekiel chapter 38, 39, Daniel chapter 11, verse 40. <coughs> Excuse me. The Western Confederacy, the revived Roman Empire of the Ten Nations or the Ten Toes, Daniel chapter 2, verse 45, uh, 42 through 45, 7, verses 7 and 8. Verse 24, chapter 11, verses 41 through 45, Revelation 19, 19. The Eastern Confederacy, Red China and her hordes, Daniel chapter 11, verse 44, Matthew 24, 30, Revelation 16, 12, Revelation 19, 19. The Heavenly Confederacy, Christ and his armies, Revelation 19, 19, and verse 21. And then the end. And then eternity. Not really. You have what? Huh? What? Yes, millennium. You have the millennial reign. Then you have what? Yes. Right? You got a short season, little season. He's let out. Why is he let out? Exactly. How often will people die during the millennium? Yeah, that well it says that yeah, it says if they if they die at a hundred years old that they'll be considered but a babe. Okay. So why? Because death and sin has been removed. Okay. So sin has been removed by the righteousness of Christ being present on the earth. So you're going to have what kind of people here? I know you got to go home, but, but, I, but I'm having fun now. How many people are you going to have here? What kind? What kind of people? What kind of people? So we're going to have 
our supernatural state, those of us who've been glorified, what kind of people, what other kind of people are you going to have like this? Yeah, you're going to have a tribulation saints. You're going to have regular people, people that were that made it through the tribulation period and they're still humans. What other people? Who, who, yeah, the angels, but who, who's going to be the guest? Old Testament saints, resurrected Old Testament saints. They're not part of the church. Okay. Not part of the church. They're part of Israel's promise. Okay. Old Testament saints. All right. Let's pray. That was fun.